Well, good morning. We are excited that you are joining us today. We're up for a great day at the Woods Church. And whether you're watching live online right now on Sunday morning or sometime later in the week, we are excited that you are here with us. My name is Aaron, and this is Whitney. And we're glad that you could join us today. Yes, hi guys, I'm Whitney. I'm so glad that you're joining us for Church Online today at 11. Um, we're just thrilled that you are tuning in. Like Aaron said throughout the week, I didn't even think about that, but that's such an amazing thing. If you're going back, you're rewriting your notes, you're taking the time to actually listen to a message. But um, where are you right now? You know? Yeah, throw us a comment. Yeah, let us know. Are you on vacation? In this beautiful sort of springy day. It almost feels summery today, doesn't it? I know, it? I know, it's crazy. Well, we are excited for church today. This is week two of part four of our long series, Sacred Rhythm. So we've been in this series now for quite a while. So we're in part four, and last week we just got started with week one, but this is week two. So today, Pastor Matt is going to be speaking about salt and light, the call of Jesus to be salt and light to the world. Um, I love hearing Matt speak. He has such a good energy. I know he speaks to our students all the time, so he just kind of brings a really cool vibe to our Sunday morning service. We're excited to hear from him. Yeah. <laughs> Pastor Matt is hilarious, and you guys are in for a treat. But we also had an amazing sermon last week from Pastor John, The Sacred Rhythm of Saying Yes. If you didn't see it, check it out right now. You see, I believe that our lives as Christ followers should be wrapped in supernatural movement of the Holy Spirit. It should be. We should be having supernaturally sourced conversations with people every day that leaves them asking, what just happened to me? I feel like I just encountered Jesus. Will you say yes? Will you say yes to being the salt of the earth? Yes to being Christ's light to the world. Yes to being his ambassadors. Yes to being sourced by the Holy Spirit daily. Yes to be obedient to the Holy Spirit when he calls your name and asks you to do something. When you say yes, church, he chooses you. He chooses you to advance his kingdom upon the earth in miraculous ways. Will you say yes? Uh, what a great reminder from last week, saying yes to Jesus when he calls us to do things or to go places or to say things that we are called to say yes to whatever he has for us. Well, if you're just logging on or just joining us this morning, good morning. My name is Aaron. This is Whitney. We are excited that you are with us today. Um, and so if you're watching online right now, we care about you. We would love to be able to connect with you. We're excited that you're joining us online. So whether you're watching on Facebook or YouTube or whatever that is, we are glad you're here. And we want to connect with you. Each week we talk about three easy ways to connect with us. And the first way I believe is the most important, and that's for you to join us. I mean, you see these folks behind us right here, everybody walking into church this morning. We would love to have you here. So I know it's about 11 o'clock right now, so you probably can't join us this week, but we would love to see you next week or some other Sunday morning. Come and join us. Services are at 9 and 11 a.m. And we've got things going on for your kids. For, uh, there's a nursery all the way up to about fifth grade. So we would love to have you join us. <laughs> the second great way is to text the word connect to the number on the screen, 586-200-1785. Um, we have an amazing team here that really puts care and thought into the responses. No matter if it's on Sunday or throughout the week, if you want to learn more about the Witch Church, if you have a prayer class, if you're hoping to plug into an event, we have lots of events coming up and new series. So we encourage you to text the word connect and get plugged in today. And now don't worry about texting that word connect to that number because I don't know about you, but I've been getting a bunch of political texts lately that you have to reply Ooh. stop to. The church is not going to spam your phone with a bunch of messages, but important things that are coming up. All right, so first one is join us. Second one, text that word connect to the phone number on your screen. And the third one is to download the Church Center app. Now, I know you probably already have like 55 apps on your phone, but this is a great way to find out what's going on in the life of the church. Mm -hmm. You can find out about upcoming events, register for those events if they uh, need to be registered for. Um, you can give online. You can find out about what's going on for kids, what's going on for teenagers, all kinds of stuff. Download that Church Center app. It'd be a great way for you to be able to connect with the what's going on in the life of the church. Yeah, and they have so many opportunities, even like all the way to December. So if there's something you're interested in, definitely download that. Um, but also a great way that we all kind of deal with in our modern lives is social media. And we have so many wonderful accounts on TikTok, on Facebook, Instagram, what have you, 
that are concerned with giving you the word of Jesus Christ throughout your week. So breathing that fresh um, life into you, being able to share with your friends about something that touched you. Maybe you did your devotions and now you're seeing a clip of Pastor Matt or Nikki or John speaking that same word. And you know that you know if you send it to someone, it will not return for it. So we encourage you to check out our socials and see how you can breathe life into your week. Absolutely. A lot of times when we talk about some of those social media platforms or the other things going on in the life of the church, we use the phrase seven days a week. And so we know that Jesus has called to follow him seven days a week, right? Well, throughout the week, though, on a Monday, on a Wednesday, finding other ways to connect with believers, whether that's digitally or whether that's in person, can be a big part of your walk with Jesus. And so we would encourage you. Um, come to things that are with other believers, whether it's at the church or somewhere else, but also use those digital media platforms as a way of doing that. And when you're on them, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. And I know I always make fun of the YouTubers that throw that out there when they're dropping videos, but this is a way that you can share what God's been doing in your life or what God's been doing in the life of our church. And so it's not just a narcissistic thing to say, you know, subscribe to us or uh, hit the like button, but sometimes this is a way that it's sharing with other people about what God's doing. So we'd love you to hit those buttons and uh, kind of increase your influence with other people. So true, so true. Speaking of the events we have coming up, we have an amazing series kicking off. It started today. Uh, it's still going on next week. It's a five-week series called Starting Point. If you have just accepted the Lord Jesus Christ into your heart or you're kind of thinking, how do I learn the fundamentals of what it truly is to be a Christ follower and pursue his presence in my life, we encourage you to join us at 10 a.m. on Sundays for our Starting Point series. It's really exciting. Um, and I just love the church's heart for discipleship here. So more than just hearing the truth, you're really getting the staff who are working to help you through that journey and disciple you through it. We also have, if you're new to the woods and you want to learn more about what it looks like to be a member or to fully serve, there's also the Rooted class on April 28th, so I think about two weeks from now. And we encourage you, I think it's at 10 a.m., but you should check that Church Center app for more details about it and get rooted into the Woods Church in the life here. Absolutely. Two great opportunities are coming up. That starting point class and that rooted class. Uh, you know, it's funny. I was just having a conversation with somebody that said, ah, I've been having trouble, like, finding a way to get involved. We come on a Sunday morning, but we've not, you know, we've only been around for a little while. Both of those two things are great. Like Whitney said, the starting point class, the first one, that's maybe for somebody who's newer to Jesus, or maybe you've been, like, had a relationship with Jesus, but nobody has really discipled you or taught you about what it means to truly follow him. That starting point pl class would be a great place to be or maybe you've been following Jesus for a while and you're just new to the Woods Church uh, if you attend Rooted like we said on the 28th you'll be able to meet with meet some of the staff who you might see up on the platform other people who serve at the church um, and so that's a little bit of a different experience but maybe you just want to find out more about well what does the Woods Church believe and what kinds of things go on here and so it's a great <laughs> way for you to get connected there as well yeah. all right so we talked about some upcoming events that are ongoing events the starting point class and Rooted Whitney, I am excited for the men's conference. Men's so conference. I'm sorry, you're not able to go. It's just for, just for us fellas, you know. but it is coming up and we are excited. The Stronger Men's Conference is gonna be this Friday and Saturday here at the Woods Church. And word is getting out and the registrations are starting to trickle in. Men are notoriously bad at signing up for things, but you need to get on the Church Center app. Um, if for whatever reason that doesn't work for you, you can call the church, we'll get you registered. But we are excited. We got some guest speakers coming in, Bob Sorg, and Justin Chandler. Bob's been here a few times for Revival, and he has just really connected well with the people of our church, so we are excited to have him back. So we need to get you registered so we can know little things like how much food to have for you guys and for some of the events and things like that. So make sure that you're signing up to come in there. Yeah. We're just about a minute away from service. Um, it is a beautiful day outside, Whitney. It is gorgeous. Do you have any plans to head outside at all today or this week? Um, no, I do not, but I should make some it based should on be. this I weather. know, right? It's Even gorgeous. if it's just sitting on your patio or <laughs> something outside today, you need to get outside. <laughs> Absolutely. It's beautiful. Well, we are excited to head in here in just a few minutes. And so whatever you're doing right now, uh, quiet yourself. Quiet your, your house right now. Maybe turn off the things that need to be turned off. Get yourself set but also quiet your heart and mind. God is ready to work today. We're excited to hear from Pastor Matt, and we know that watching today could be the thing that changes your week. We're so glad that you joined us. Have a great day. 
Good morning, everybody. We are so excited to worship with you all this morning. Whether you are here with us in person or joining us online, would you stand with me today as we lift the name of our Savior high, as we declare who He is and give Him all the praise that He is worthy of in this place. Come on.
sing that line of everything for Jesus. It really made me think about John 3:16, a verse that we all know and love and the truth that for God so loved the world, for God so loved us that he sent his son down, his everything he gave to die 
a brutal death on the cross so that we would have hope of eternity spent with him in heaven. He gave his beloved son for you and for me. And so how could our response to that be anything less than everything that we have? How could our response to that be anything less than, here's my whole life, Jesus. Here's every breath that I breathe. Here's every song that I will sing to declare that you would be magnified, Jesus, to declare that people would see you in me before they ever even saw me. It's a heart posture that says, I don't need anything else other than the one thing, and that one thing is to be with you, Jesus. It's the heart posture that says, if I had nothing else in this lifetime, if I never get any of the things that I have been praying for or will pray for, that you are everything that I need. And so our response to that is, here is everything that I am, and here is everything that I have. So as we continue to worship, just lock eyes with him. Declare that he is all that you need.
of who we are today, Lord, that you would be the one that we lock eyes with as we continue on with our service this morning, that we wouldn't break apart from that, Lord, but we would continue to just glorify you, to magnify your name, Lord. Our hearts are ready, they are open, and they are willing and listening as we wait for the sound of your voice this morning, God. We declare that you will be praised and you will be lifted high in this place. In Jesus' name. Amen. You guys may be seated. Amen. Good morning. One of the things I love about the Woods Church is that we are a church of prayer and we are a church of worship. And we come here, we come here to honor and praise the King of Kings. That's why we're here. That's the purpose. And so many of you uh, practice that, acknowledge that, and you're here for him. You're here to encounter him. And I just love that about the Woods Church. Oh, I have just a couple quick announcements this morning. Uh, men's conference is coming up this next week. It's going to be awesome. So men, if you haven't registered, you can get out your phones right now. I'm giving you permission right now. Scan that QR code. Uh, go ahead and register for the men's conference. Wives, if you want to do it for them, you can do it for them. Uh, register them. It's going to be a great time. Bob Sorge is going to be here, and man, he is incredible. He's been a, a spiritual mentor of mine from afar. I've read so many of his books, and just an incredible man of God. Justin Chandler, a great friend of mine, pastors out in California, is going to be here as well, just kind of speaking and pouring into the men of our church this next weekend. And ladies, you're not left out. Because Bob Sorge is going to stay over for Sunday morning. And he's going to be preaching Sunday morning. So you'll get to experience uh, uh, just a great uh, time in God's presence Sunday morning as well. Uh, if you are new to the Woods Church and uh, you want to get plugged in or you want to learn more about our church, your next step is our Rooted class. And that's taking place in two weeks. On the 25th, we'll have Rooted class here right after uh, the 11 o'clock service. We'll feed you lunch. There's child care provided. But if you're newer to our church and just want to learn more about how our church functions and operates and what's really important to us and how to get plugged in and connected, then Rooted is your class. And you can, again, reg uh, uh, scan that QR code and you can register uh, for Rooted. Well, this morning, before we go any further, I just have some special recognition that I want to give out. And I'm going to ask Tom Kelly to come and... Uh, <laughs> he was really surprised in first service. <laughs> but I'm asking him to come and join me on stage. Tom uh, has served our church uh, behind the scenes in, in several different capacities for almost 40 years. Back in the 80s and 90s, he led caravans and Boy Scouts through our church. He's worked with our students in our youth ministry. He's uh, uh, worked in our kitchen since the day it opened, since the day it was built back in 2000. So if you've ever had a meal, had snacks, had coffee here at the church, anything like that, Tom was probably involved in some way, shape, or form. He has served almost on a weekly basis the people in the ministries of the Woods Church for 40 years. Uh, he still leads the Men of Light uh, uh, men's group uh, here. And just incredible, incredible servant, uh, 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 hearted guy, incredible man of God. In fact, there's a story. I didn't share this first service, but I was remembering a story. <laughs> I don't even know if you know this story. But I, I remember a story. We, we got a pallet of water uh, delivered to the church, and they just dropped it off, like in the parking lot on that side by the, by the docking bay. 
And I went out because it needed to go to the garage over here on this side of the church parking lot. And I got out there and I tried pulling that pallet jack and jacking it up and pulling that thing. I'm like, this is not working. I can't even budge this thing. So I just left it there, went back into my office. I started thinking, how am I going to move all this pallet of water to the, all the way across the church parking lot to the garage without case by case? I was thinking to myself, maybe I'll, I'll tie a rope to the church truck, tie it to the pallet jack, and just slowly <laughs> tow it over there. Anyway, I left it for a couple hours. I, I, I went back out to try my plan in my head, and I look out across the parking lot, and here's Tommy. This is 10 years ago. He is pulling the, the pallet of water with the pallet jack across the parking lot. I think he was doing it with one hand. And I'm thinking to myself. Probably whistling too. Probably whistling too. I'm thinking to myself, I am a loser. I am weak. I got to get to the gym because <laughs> this guy just totally outstrengthened me. <laughs> <laughs> move with that pallet of water. But uh, man, we are so grateful for Tommy. And I want to, we want to give him, we're going to give him the Distinguished Service Award through our church. And this is what, this is what this reads. In gratitude and honor of your many years of service and for your passion to love, lead, and care for so many, we say thank you and pray God's richest blessings on you as you continue to serve and build his kingdom. Thank you. That's for you. We thought this was very appropriate. This is just the sculpture of Jesus washing his disciples' feet. And uh, Tommy never wanted recognition. He, he would never, he's, he's behind the scenes guy. He just serves and leads faithfully. And Tommy, we are so, so thank you. Yeah. Here. Thank you. Thank you. If I could encourage you, uh, just one thing, uh, it's get involved. God needs you to step forward because he can't. He can't work through you if you're, if you're always uh, not willing to step forward. You step forward, and uh, God will not only equip you, he'll direct you, and he'll bless you. Boy, will he bless you. And that's what, as a church, we need to do as servants. Thank you. Thank you so much. Love you. Uh, there's so many, um, like Tommy, who just serve behind the scenes, who just serve their time, their talents faithfully, and give to the Lord. And not only do I love that about our church and uh, about what Tom represents here at the Woods Church, but I love that you always give financially and you give faithfully. Uh, I just can't even explain to you how good God has been and how faithful God has been to multiply the gifts that you give. Uh, back to him. Uh, that's through your tithes and offerings. That's through your talents. That's through the time and serving. Man, God blesses this church. He blesses us. And man, he just increases that uh, for our community and for the people that we serve. So thank you to all of you. Uh, as we say each week, there's three ways to give uh, here at the Woods Church. You can give on our church center app. You can give online or there's giving boxes out in our lobby that that you can put your tithes and offerings in. Well, let's prepare our hearts for this morning's message.
Uh, good morning, church. How are we doing? Hey, oh no. It's aggressive clapping. A few of you. Relax. Anyways, I just say good morning. Um, anyway, um, good to be with you. Been a little while, a few months. I think Christmas Eve was the last time uh, I had preached. So if you're new with us, uh, Pastor Matt, the youth pastor here, and it's good to be with you. She got a little rust off uh, a little bit. We are in part four of our uh, Sacred Rhythm series, this idea of ministry, kind of bringing it all full circle. I started to jump into that and, and talk about ministry. You guys just, I don't know if Tom's still in, in the room, but you got to hear a little bit about him. Uh, Tom was one of the, uh, well, one of, he was the first person who ever took me camping uh, when I was a kid, and I, I, I distinctly remember that and the relationships I built doing that, and I've had the privilege of serve alongside Tom for so many years, and, you know, uh, I, I get to run the wild game dinner here. It's a two-night dinner, and I've been working in the kitchen alongside uh, Tom, and, and usually we're in the kitchen to about 1 a.m., cleaning dishes uh, each night, just because it's that many people, and um, I'll just never forget uh, being in there as kind of a, uh, you know, young 30-something, and having some college-age kids in there cleaning, and we're just all getting tired, and we're struggling, and we're sitting down, and uh, there's Tom, just motoring, uh, keeping it going, and uh, it's just just his work ethic to be able to continue to do that, and, and um, it wasn't this past year, we were doing an event, I think we were hosting a, a banquet of some sort, I had some teenagers, they didn't all even go to our church that were kind of helping serve uh, at this, this dinner and we got done and I just stopped him and I said, let me tell you about Tom. Let me tell you about men like Tom um, because he was the one in there, last one usually mopping the floor before we were all done and, and that's what a, a man of God looks like. That's what a goal uh, looks like. And so I was a little teary-eyed at 9 a.m., but I held, held it together uh, this morning. But Tom, you are the, the man. And so appreciate you guys. Um, so rhythms of, of ministry, I, I love the kind of the video that tells the story uh, of people spending time with the Lord and then uh, it's, it really doesn't stay with themselves, but then that spreads to their relationships with other people. And that's really what we're called to do. If, if all that we do is receive from the Lord and then, and then there's, there's no um, ministry that comes out of that, we, we've missed something. And so this idea of uh, rhythm of ministry is so vital uh, to who we are as believers. Uh, and, and let me know if you've ever heard this quote, the best defense is a good offense. Have you, have you heard that? Yeah. All right. I, I like to think that way. As I played sports, I tend to be an offensive minded person. Defense was really, really hard work. You couldn't take any plays off or else you get scored on. But as a, as a striker, as an offender, then it was like, you know, I'll work hard a little bit, and then I'll take a break. And then I'll work hard a little bit and take a break. We're talking about soccer. And uh, so I loved playing offense. Uh, Lions act like this a little bit, not a whole lot of defense. But if we score enough, it, it worked out pretty good. Not all the way. We'll, we'll adjust some things. But oftentimes, it is true. The, the best defense is a good offense. That, that, that idea isn't actually at first attributed to us in sports, but it was uh, first brought up. Uh, by George Washington and I think it was 1799. Uh, he said this, make them believe that offensive operations oftentimes is the surest, if not the only, in some cases, means of defense. And if you think about that militarily, if that's a word, I think it is. <laughs> is right? All right. Yes. Good, thanks. Checks out. It makes a lot of sense, right? If you only defend sooner or later, uh, you are going to tire out and you are going to lose. And I think that idea translates to our faith. If all we do in our faith is defense, meaning we, we avoid sin, we, we try to avoid corruption, which are, are good things to avoid, uh, then sooner or later, we're going to fail. And quite honestly, it's a pretty miserable existence. 
And it's one of the reasons we have time, a hard time sharing our faith with other people. Maybe, maybe you're new uh, or, or you're a guest with us this morning. I, I want to assure you that the Christian faith is so much more than what not to do. In fact, that's just a small part, if any part. It's what God's called us to do, and that's what we're going to get into this morning. You guys with me? Yeah. Okay, we're going to take a look at Scripture, and we're going to jump into the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount. We're going to be Matthew chapter 5. And so Jesus is on the scene. He's selected his disciples, people that are going to follow him and learn from him and replicate him. He's building relationships. He has taught in some synagogues. Uh, he has performed some miracles and he is beginning to get a following. And so uh, this is one of his first large gatherings where you've got just an immense amount of people coming to hear uh, Jesus, I love how this event is portrayed in The Chosen, uh, the TV show, where they're getting ready and they kind of put this uh, event on. And so he opens and he, he gives this uh, um, sermon uh, that we call the Beatitudes, which are these contrasting ideas. So people are coming to find out what Jesus is all about, and he says, it's kind of like this. This is who's going to be blessed, the people who mourn, the people uh, who are hungry and thirsty, the people who are meek, the people who are persecuted. And, and I have to imagine the people listening were a little bit like, that's weird, okay. Uh, and then, and then in, as we jump in, in verse 13, he transitions from this general idea of who will be blessed to this idea of you. I can imagine in, in, in that moment, he was saying you, and people were sitting there like, like me? There's nobody else here. Maybe, maybe it's Tom. Maybe Tom. That's, you know, me. Okay. All right, and so let's, let's hear what he says. If you guys have your Bibles, Matthew chapter 5. Okay, verse 13. He says, you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? Oh, that's, S's are tough for me, okay. It's like Sally sells seashells. Whew. Let me read again. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under foot. All right. Salt is an interesting way to, to, to call his people out. I, I'm not sure if you're scientifically understand all that salt is. We're going to dive in a little bit on salt this morning. Does that sound good? All right. I'm not a big salt guy. The only time I ever touch salt is if I'm filling up my bug gun. Have you seen those? Yep. They're awesome. If you haven't, yep. later. Now's not the time, but just, it'll be worth it. Okay. I, I will literally, if I get a pretzel, I will rub all the salt off the pretzel. I just, I just, it's not, I don't know. I was, uh, we were eating dinner last night, and Julie was like, can you get the salt? I'm like, this is going to be in the sermon tomorrow. And I was hoping it would make sense. I was like, I don't really like salt. She's like, that's because I make everything perfectly. And so that doesn't really, it doesn't really apply, but I told her I'd tell you guys all that. And um, she does a pretty good job. Okay. Um, and, and so the scholars are, are kind of up in the air uh, about what Jesus was talking about. It, it may have been that uh, Jesus was near the Dead Sea, which is the salt content is extremely high. Nothing lives in there. And so salt would kind of uh, be left over as it would evaporate, but it wasn't really useful for much. So he may have been talking about this, like this useless salt. He may have been referencing kind of the antiseptic nature of salt and how it cures things. Might have been the bakers would use these salt stones that eventually in the heat of the oven would go bad and they'd be tossed out. Uh, it may have been just the simple value of salt. In the ancient time, it was extremely useful, so much so that the, the Romans would, uh, the army, some of the, the military men would be paid in salt. 
They could trade it for different things. It's actually where we get the, 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 the word salary. It was salarium. Okay? And so there's this idea that salt was extremely valuable back then. Today, and, and, and then there's still kind of two main ideas. It's flavor and it's preservation. Now, I don't think that Jesus was saying, you are the kind of people that are going to make everyone's fries taste better. I don't think he, I mean, it's nice to say like, ooh, we're the flavor of the world. I don't think that's what he was saying. I mean, it, 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 it may be. But I don't think that's what they're saying. If it was me, I would have said you were the Chick-fil-A sauce of the world or you are the Jets ranch of the world, right? You know what I'm saying? Some of you understand, right? That, that's what I would have said. I don't think that's what he was getting at. I think, by and large, Jesus was just talking about the, 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 the contrast, the value of what salt meant in that day and the idea of its characteristics and how they preserved different things. I mean, salt was essential back then. They didn't have refrigerators to plug in. And so if you wanted to keep your food from spoiling, like you, you needed these things. I mean, these things kept life going. Salt was so important. Salt, even in your body, was so important. It regulates your, your, your water. And if you don't have the right salt content, then, then you, your body physically struggles. So it's extremely important. But this idea of preservation, I think, is what Jesus was trying to get at. You are the people who will preserve the world. Now, I started thinking about what we preserve today. There are some good things. There's a lot of efforts behind preservation. Uh, you, you go to nature preserves where there's, there's sanctuaries for animals, and I, I, I love those. I love going to them. I love hiking and, and seeing that, and I think that's a worthy cause. Uh, there's also, um, we want to preserve history, and so we have museums, and we have these different things. In, in, in Metro Detroit, you've got Greenfield Village, you've got Huckleberry Railroad, and, and every year we would go to these things. But what I noticed about those is that oftentimes when I bring my kids, they don't care. <laughs> it's like, look, they used to have to use a lantern. They're like, great, but in this house, they've already ran electricity in it, and you can drop the lights on. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I go to museums now, and there's stuff from my childhood in them. Like, like there's a regular Nintendo in there. And I'm like, what is happening? No. Right? But, but what I notice about these things, and, and this is how God spoke this to me uh, as I was studying, so often preservation is just preserving the memory. And I think God's saying many in the church are, 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 are just trying to preserve the memory. I know that because, you know, on Christmas time, people get all riled up. Oh, everyone's saying, oh, Starbucks isn't celebrating Christmas, and they didn't put this on their cup. And so we, we get more upset or we get more vocal about the memory not being preserved than preserving the purpose. And when God calls his people, he says, you are the salt. He's saying that you need to be the ones that preserve my purpose here on earth to, to set up the kingdom of God here on earth. You are the ones who are going to preserve my presence here. See, in scripture, it actually says, Jesus said, it's better that I leave. It's better that I go in order that I might send the Holy Spirit who will guide you and counsel you into what? into ministry, into the things that he has prepared for you to do. Ephesians 2, you are his workmanship created in Christ to do good works. There's things that he wants us to do. Ministry. That's what it means for him to say you are the salt of the earth. I mean, salt was distinctly different. You, you are not just a grain of sand that blends into everything else. You are uniquely different, and you were created to preserve my purposes on the earth. What's interesting about salt is for it to be able to preserve something, it has to be on it. Can't be near it, can't be by it. And so oftentimes, I think in, in, in the church and as Christians over the last couple of decades, 
Churches very much remove themselves. From afar, we've complained that the memory isn't there, that people aren't doing the things that they used to do. Oh, they're not coming to church like they used to. We're not doing this like they used to. We're not doing this like they used to. But yet, we're, we're not focused on the purposes of the church anymore. And so there's no wonder why in many places the trends have been reversed and people have got upset about it. But Jesus didn't say, hey, I want you to get really upset about the trends and that the loss of the memory, that, that people don't think you're important. Well, then make them important. God has called you to be the salt of the earth. Can't remove ourselves, can't be distant, can't be away. In order to preserve this earth, we have to be in it. That's just the way that it works. And so, yes, of course, the, the world has a sin problem. No doubt about it. But the church has an evangelizing problem. The, the, the statistics are out. Barna Research would say that you know, in between 60 and 70% of all churchgoers haven't shared their faith with anybody in the past six months. That, that salt that is useless, salt that isn't fulfilling its purpose. It's what scripture says, right, in, in, in verse 13. How can it be made salty again if it loses its saltiness? It's no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under foot. And this question perplexed me because can salt lose its saltiness? I mean, maybe if you throw in a hose, but I looked it up, it's a stable compound. It doesn't really lose its saltiness. It, 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 it's, it's stable. As long as you put it in a container, it's fine. It'll, it'll, it'll work. It's not going to go bad. You can use salt. It, it'll fulfill its purpose. And so some scholars say it may, it may have just been an idiom that they said back then. Can salt lose its saltiness? No. If it was actually salt, it can't lose its saltiness. If, if you're actually a believer, if you actually have faith in me, then, then you, you won't lose the purpose. If you've lost the purpose, though, then I'm not really sure. Is, is that, does that make sense? I mean, salt doesn't lose its saltiness. But, but I want to pay attention because if Jesus is saying, hey, if it does, it needs to be thrown out. I don't want to be thrown out. I, I don't want to be useless. That's some strong language that he used. Je Jesus didn't beat around the bush. In, in Luke, he records it this way. It says that, that, that it's not even good enough for the manure pile. Right? So when we're reading the kids' version, I mean, Luke says it even, even um, harder. Like, he wants people to know. He wants to shock people. He wants to, like, you, if you don't do this, your purpose, your usefulness is gone. The way I like to think about this, I was cleaning um, the house the other day, and my kids have like a craft closet. So we've got crayons, markers, colored pencils, stuff, 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 stuff. I don't know. So I was cleaning it out, and I came across the Highlights magazine. You guys know what the Highlights magazines are? Let's go. About to find me a toothbrush or a comb in, in the picture. The picture find it, right? Well, I opened it up, and they were all circled. Is there anything more useless than a highlights magazine that has the picture search circled? There isn't. It is good for nothing other than to be thrown out. Those other 20, 30 pages might as well not exist. I don't know what's on them. I have never seen them. They do not matter. I hope you can understand. It's useless. And so Jesus is saying, when you fail to live up to intended purpose, you are like a highlights magazine that can be thrown in the trash. That's exactly what I did. And it, <laughs> I 
It's harsh. That's less harsh than manure. <laughs> but this is why when people were listening to Jesus, they were in awe because Jesus taught with such authority because he showed up and said, this is how it is. I know you're all looking for the blessing and you're looking for this, but this is my calling for you. And this is still the calling for the church today. I want to to read this one more time. Verse um, 13, it says, you are the salt of the earth. Okay, so if you are the salt, then I think we can substitute the word salt with you in the next verse. But if you lose your saltiness, how can you be made salty again? You are no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under foot. Hmm. So what do we do? Let's keep reading. This is what Jesus says. Verse 14, he says, You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Your good deeds, the things that you will do, your actions are what's going to fulfill the purpose. Now, this gets hairy if you've studied theology a little while, because this is why Martin Luther went and he nailed his 95 theses. It was like, whoa, 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 you're not saved by what you do. You are saved by grace, which we agree with. But Martin Luther was also the one who said, God doesn't need your good deeds, your neighbor does. They're still needed. It's not going to save you, but it's still your calling. It's still imperative. Because if not, you get thrown off to the side, trampled underfoot. And that's what many have done in this world. Oh, I don't need God. I don't need the church. Well, guess what? That wasn't on them to be convinced that God's needed. That was on us. We're the preservative. We're the salt. We're the ones who need to be placed on people so that they understand. And so the the onus is on us. That's why this is so important. This is why part four, if you you miss one of the parts, you've you've missed it all. You can't have what God's done in your life and and, and then not want to reflect that back to the world. You are the light of the world. This is significant because in John chapter 1 as Jesus is introduced it says he was the word and the word became flesh and he was full of light and there was no darkness in him. John's talking about John the Baptist he wasn't the light but the one who come after him is the light and there's no darkness in him he is the light of the world in John 8 Jesus identifies himself I am the light of the world and so he takes that title that's his and he gives it to you and me and says you are the light of the world There's an exchange of ownership there. And again, I already covered. He said, it's better that I leave so that you can do this because we can do significantly more than Jesus can limited by himself. If we become salt and light on the earth. We were talking about this in youth ministry this week. We had one of our volunteers preaching Devin Embody and it was really good what he shared, so I wanted to bring it up. He talked about how in Detroit, uh, we had a significant lighting problem. I don't know if you're familiar with this, but there were tens of thousands of streetlights that were out. I mean, just, just, it wasn't good. And so Governor Snyder in 2012 created the PLA, the Public Lighting Authority, that was going to be comprised of, um, uh, of, uh, 
it would be lay folk, because not staff. It'd be uh, in, what's that? Just private citizens. I don't know what they were, private citizens. They, they, were, they would make up the board. And in two years, they had every single light working, updated technology with tens of thousands of lights more than they started with in the first place. The effect of that was that neighborhoods where nobody was ever seen walking after dark all of a sudden were filled with life. All of a sudden, businesses started coming into you and there was life again in the city. So much so that nationwide recognition was given and presidents have even come to, to, to interview and to figure out the strategy all because light was restored. Church, if we can restore the identity of being light within the church, guess what? People are going to come back to life. That's just the truth of Scripture. That's the truth that we have to believe. And I know it's easy to get fixated on the darkness. Oh, this isn't like it used to. This is getting worse. Schools, the kids... I know the threats of war escalating in Israel and there's the attack yesterday um, from, from Iran and there's, 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 there's legitimate concerns. But I promise you this, our time is far better spent focused on being the light and what God is doing than worrying about the dark. Amen. And I'm not saying that we be ignorant I'm not saying we're not prudent. I'm not saying we don't understand threats. I'm not saying we just think, oh, God will protect everything and I don't got to worry about a thing. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is if we only focus on defense, trying to preserve a memory, we have missed it. And God has called us to offense. He's called us to be a light in this broken world. This is what scripture says John chapter 13, this is Jesus. A new commandment I give you, that you would love one another, even as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. They're not gonna know you're his disciples because you have good ideas. They're gonna know because you love in action. There's a requirement of us. Did you know that? The, the law of love requires action. I, I share this with the students all the time because it's important to understand. Every other religion in the world operates on what we call the silver rule. Don't do to somebody else what you don't want done to you. If you can do that, you're good. You don't want to be kicked in the shins? Well, they don't kick anybody in the shins. You don't want to be made fun of, then don't make fun of other people. You don't want to be taken advantage of, then don't take you know, advantage of other people. But the golden rule requires something of, of you. It says, love your neighbor as yourself. You understand that? It is required of you to actively be love. If we do that, there will be very few people saying, oh, we need less of that. I mean, no one's going to say we need less of that. That's what we need. And I know, you know, in our culture, oh, love is love. No, God is love. God is love. And it's the expectation for us to love our neighbor as ourselves, to love our enemy. Pastor John's going to bring a word in a few weeks in this idea. But it's so vital. We overcomplicate this. We, 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 I'm not sure how to love my, my neighbor. I mean, you spend time with the Lord, he'll, he'll show you. That's what it boils down to. I love, I love playing board games, but it's oftentimes hard to convince my friends to play. It's like, hey guys, let's play a board game. They're like, oh, how long is it going to take to teach us the rules? Is this one of those games that are like, you know, and then you tell me half the rules halfway through and things, and then, you know, I'm like, no, 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 this, this is a simple one. I've learned which ones I can bring out. It'd almost be nice if Christianity was like that. Like, here it is. But it is. 
Matthew 22, love the Lord God with all your heart, mind and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. If we can do that, we will be God's light and salt of the earth. We will preserve his spirit here on earth. That's what he wants us to be. The representation of him should still be here today. So how do you know, what's that look like? I know it's a little bit general this morning. Here, here's what it's not, and, and, I'll, and I'll wrap up. You walk out of here and you're like, oh, Pastor Matt said, I'll go really try hard to love people. <laughs> then you'll do an okay job. You'll win some, you'll lose some. And then you'll tire out and you'll do what everybody else does. You'll just take care of yourself. Don't want to be kicked, don't kick. Like just. But, but if you have a relationship with Jesus, so you're near to him, and each and every day you are with him and you go before him and you humble yourself and you say, God, I, I'm a sinner in need of, 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 of your grace and, and he gives that to you and you're like, I don't, this doesn't make sense and, I, and you get that grace over and over again and day after day after day and you experience his love in your life, then that's what you become. You become like those you hang out with. If you hang out with Jesus often, you will begin to think and act like Jesus. You will begin to preserve Jesus' spirit as you cry out and say, God, I need you. And so the answer isn't go try really hard. The answer is to be with Jesus. That's the only way I know how. Every day in his presence, asking him, receiving his love first, and then in turn, giving that out. What would it look like for the hundreds in this room to preserve Jesus' mission and purpose in our community? And church, I tell you what, we're doing a pretty good job. And we get to hear stories as our staff each and every week, people walking in, that was in darkness, and then someone showed me the light. And they're praising Jesus, and, and, and they're giving their lives to him, and they're being baptized, and it's an exciting day. And so I'm not harping on us this morning. I think we're doing a good job. I'm just saying, let's keep going. Let's, let's, let's dig a little more. Let's step on the gas pedal on offense. Let's not be all, we've, we've scored enough points. Let's keep going because this world needs to see Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Jesus. God, this is the title you, you gave to us. You said that we could be like you. We could be the light of the world. God, that we would be the salt, that we would be the ones who preserve. And so, Heavenly Father, I just pray right now all over this church, God, that, that you're giving dreams, you're giving visions, you're giving ideas of how we can love our neighbor of how this becomes not just, just talk, not just an idea, not just an expression, but this becomes manifest in our lives. That the stories of people coming in and saying, I was in darkness and now, now I found the light, God, would be multiplied. That we would restore health, that we would restore vibrancy to people's lives. Because the darkness is real but it has not overcome your kingdom and it will not and it cannot. God, all over this room, may you send your light out to this community. God, in their workplaces, in their schools, on their teams, in their clubs, in their families, in their gatherings. Jesus, we will be your salt and light in this world. And the Woods Church said, amen, amen. amen.
Hey, as we dismiss, I know some of you, you may have needs, you may have something stirring in your heart that God wants you to do and you just want to be prayed for. We'll have a team uh, up front. We'd love for you to come forward. We would love uh, to pray with you as individuals. Uh, For the rest of us, as you go today, may you passionately pursue God and relentlessly reveal Jesus to the world. You are dismissed. Share out. The word of God is never void when sent out, and you never know who might need to hear this exact message today. Um, all, all the ways to connect are on the screen. Feel free to text connect. It's the easiest way. Or download that Church Center app and join us for our Starting Point series next week. Have a blessed Sunday. Enjoy the sunshine.